Nvidia just acquired Grok for $20 billion, the largest deal in company history. But what if I told you this wasn't just a deal, it was a strategic move to lock in their AI monopoly for the next decade, leaving Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and AMD squarely in the rear view mirror. This is Boardroom Wire, let's jump into it. So let's start with what actually happened here. Nvidia, the company that powers basically all of AI right now, just made its largest acquisition ever. They're buying Grok, an AI chip startup founded by a former Google engineer named Jonathan Ross. Now, Nvidia has done deals before, but nothing close to this size. And the timing is interesting. Christmas Eve, minimal fanfare, structured in a really unusual way that we'll get into later. The big question everyone's asking, why Grok and why now? To understand that, we need to talk about something most people get wrong about AI the difference between training a model and actually using one. And I promise once you understand this distinction, the entire AI chip market will make a lot more sense. Okay, so there are two phases to AI, training and inference, and they're completely different workloads that need completely different things from the hardware. Training is like teaching a student. You take massive amounts of data, we're talking trillions of words, basically a big chunk of the internet, and you feed it to a neural network over and over again for months. The model learns patterns, it figures out how language works, how to reason, how to code, etc. This process is what's called in the industry embarrassingly parallel. That's actually a real technical term, which basically means you can split the work across thousands of chips, all working at the same time. NVIDIA's GPUs are perfect for this. They were originally designed for graphics, rendering millions of pixels simultaneously, and it turns out that that's basically the same math as training AI models. Same operations, different application. So NVIDIA dominates training, like really dominates. We're talking like 80, 90% of the market share. But this is where things get interesting. Inference is completely different. Inference is like taking an exam. Once the model is trained, inference is the act of actually using it. You send a message to ChatGPT, it generates a response. You ask Claude a question, it answers. And here's the thing that most people don't realize. When an AI generates a response to you, it has to do it one word at a time, literally. It cannot produce word number 10 until it's generated words one through nine. Each word depends on all of the words before it. This makes the work sequential, not parallel, which means that the thing that makes GPUs amazing for training, processing tons of stuff simultaneously, doesn't help as much for inference. Now, here's the economics that explain this whole deal. Inference is now over 80% of AI compute spending. Training gets all the headlines, OpenAI spent 100 million training GPT-4, but inference is where the actual money flows. Every ChatGPT query, every co-pilot suggestion, every AI feature in every app, that's all inference, happening billions of times per day. Training happens once, inference happens forever. So this is where Grok comes in. Grok's founder, Jonathan Ross, understood this distinction better than almost anyone, and he had the resume to prove it. Before starting Grok, Ross worked at Google, and while he was there, he created the TPU, Google's Tensor Processing Unit, as a 20% time project. This is Google's famous policy where engineers can spend one day a week on whatever they want. That side project eventually powered over half of Google's compute infrastructure, it's one of the most important chips in AI history. Ross left Google in 2016 with a mission, democratize access to AI compute. He saw that companies with proprietary chips could do things that everyone else couldn't afford. He wanted to break that monopoly. So he built Grok. And instead of building another GPU, he built something completely different, the LPU or Language Processing Unit. The LPU is purpose-built for inference. Here's what makes it different. GPUs achieve efficiency by batching requests together. If 100 people send messages at the same time, the GPU processes them all at once. More efficient overall, but you have to wait for the batch to fill up. And response times vary, sometimes fast, sometimes slow. 
Grok's LPU is designed for single requests. You send a prompt, you get a response immediately, no batching, no waiting. The results are pretty dramatic. Grok's chip run inference two to three times faster than comparable GPU setups. But maybe more importantly, the performance is deterministic. That means the same speed every single time with no variance. For a chatbot, maybe that variance doesn't matter much. But think about voice assistance in cars, autonomous vehicle decisions, financial trading systems. For those applications, consistent response times aren't a nice to have, they're essential. Essentially, we're moving to a world of the right chip for the right job. We're moving from NVIDIA for everything to specialized architecture for different workloads. And NVIDIA saw that coming and pounced on the opportunity to acquire Grok swiftly and with a pretty interesting structure. Okay, so here's where it gets interesting. The deal is structured in a really unusual way. Officially, it's not an acquisition, it's a non-exclusive licensing agreement. But look at what NVIDIA actually gets. A perpetual license to all of Grok's patents and IP. Jonathan Ross, the founder, joins NVIDIA. About 90% of Grok's employees join NVIDIA. $20 billion changes hands. Grok technically continues to exist as an independent company. They have a new CEO, their former CFO, and Grok Cloud, their API service, supposedly keeps running. But here's the thing. When you take all the IP and hire 90% of the people who built it, including the founder, what's really left? One analyst puts it perfectly. The structure is designed to keep the fiction of competition alive. So why structure it this way? Well, NVIDIA has been burned before. Back in 2020, NVIDIA tried to acquire ARM for $40 billion. It would have been a transformative deal, but the regulators blocked it, saying there was too much market concentration, antitrust concerns, etc. That experience clearly shaped how NVIDIA approached this deal. By calling it a license instead of an acquisition, they might avoid certain regulatory triggers. Whether it all actually works, that's an open question. The FTC has been looking at similar deals, aka Microsoft's inflection deal, Amazon's adept deal, where the structure looks like a license but functions like an acquisition. But for now, the deal is done. So let's zoom out. What does this actually mean? NVIDIA is playing offense and defense at the same time. On offense, NVIDIA now owns the best technology for training and the best technology for inference. GPUs for training, LPUs for inference from Grok. Whatever direction the AI market goes, NVIDIA wins. Jensen Huang, NVIDIA's CEO, said they plan to integrate Grok's chips into what he called the NVIDIA AI factory architecture, a complete stack for any AI workload. On the defensive front, this takes Grok off the board for everyone else. Think about who else might have wanted to buy Grok. AMD has been trying to compete with Nvidia and AI chips for years. Intel is struggling to stay relevant. Google, Amazon, and Microsoft have all been building custom chips partly to reduce their Nvidia dependency. Grok was one of the few independent options with genuinely differentiated technology, and now it's gone. These hyperscalers, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, are in a weird position with NVIDIA. They're massive customers spending billions on NVIDIA chips, but they're also competitors building their own alternatives. NVIDIA's message with this deal is, you don't need to build your own inference chips, we have Grok now, just keep buying from us. There's also something poetic about this deal. Jonathan Ross left Google to democratize AI compute to break the monopoly, to give everyone access to the kind of chips that only the big tech giants had. And now his company, his technology, his team belong to NVIDIA, the most dominant player in AI chips, the company that he set out to challenge. His most recent cohort of investors might have made 3x their money in three months, but his vision of democratization? That's a more complicated legacy. So here's the bottom line. Most people think AI is about training bigger models, and that matters. But the real shift happening right now is in inference. 
actually running these models at scale billions of times a day. NVIDIA just made its biggest bet ever on that shift. $20 billion to own the best inference technology on the market to control both sides of the AI compute stack. Whether you think that's brilliant strategy or concerning consolidation probably depends on your perspective. But either way, it's one of the most important deals in AI history. Thanks for watching. Like this video and subscribe for more strategic breakdowns on business and technology. This is Border and Wire. See you on the next one.